Hello guys, in this video we are going to do the mesh sensitivity analysis in a CFD problem. Let's start ANSYS workbench. This is otherwise called grid dependency analysis because the result should be independent of the grid size. Let us drag and drop the fluid flow fluent system into the workbench. I am changing the analysis type to 2D. I am right clicking and opening a new design model geometry and now I am changing the units to millimeter then I am doing a sketch in XY plane make the XY plane normal to us and I am drawing a rectangle Let's give the dimensions as 100 millimeters and 70 millimeters here. Also, let us have some disturbances inside the domain and now remove the unwanted things. Let's mark some dimensions for these disturbing baffles. Also, let's define the distance of these two things. Now, let us transfer the sketch into your surface. Now we have created a surface. Let's close this geometry and go to the meshing. Now in the meshing, let's name these boundaries. Let's take this as the inlet boundary. Click this and right click. And create name selection as inlet. Similarly name this boundary as outlet. Our main objective is to study the effect of the mesh size in the results. So let us have a very rough mesh or a very coarse mesh in the first analysis. Let's take that as uh, 40 millimeters because the whole domain itself having uh, 100 millimeter length and uh, 70 in the y axis. This is the very worst mesh. The result will be wrong always. Also there will be some problems in the convergence of the results. Let's try that. Let me close this and open the ANSYS Fluent. Right click the mesh and update the mesh. Now double click the setup to open the ANSYS Fluent. Let's leave all the settings as it is and just go to the boundary conditions and provide a small inlet velocity here. Now go to solution initialization, hybrid initialize. And let's try to run the calculation for a uh, 500 iterations. Uh, so even though the mesh is very coarse and very bad mesh, the solution is getting converged as 85th iteration. Let's go and see the result plots. Let's see the pressure. We are getting some values here, but these pressure values need not to be correct because the mesh is very coarse. So we have to see the, whether the result is correct or not. That's why we are doing this mesh sensitivity analysis or grid independency analysis. Now go to the reports. Go to fluxes. Go to surface integrals and go to facet average and give the inlet. Now I am calculating the pressure drop along this path that is around 0 0.49 pascals. Let me note this and this is the result that I got for a mesh size of 40 millimeters. So then I am going to reduce the mesh size further. Let us go back to the mesh and change the mesh size to 20 millimeters and generate again. Now we got a slightly refined mesh. Let's go back to the workbench and right click the setup and click update. This will change the mesh that now we have recently created. That is having a mesh size of 20 millimeters. Once the setup is updated, go to the fluent again. 
and uh, reinitialize that. Now we can observe the mesh has been updated and again run the calculation. And now we can see the solution got converged in 44th iteration itself. Now check the result again, go to surface integrals and paste the average of pressure at the inlet and computing. Now I am getting a different value. I am just copying the and paste the results here. This is for a mesh size of 20 millimeters. So now we can see the results is getting changed. So the result is actually it is dependent of the mesh size now. Now the same thing should be done for 10 millimeters, for 5 millimeters, 2 millimeters and 1 millimeter like that. So this is a laborious thing. So what we can do is we can set this as an output parameter. So go click the save output parameter and create new output parameter. This is actually the pressure drop. Since we have left the outlet pressure as zero, the pressure that is experienced at the inlet is the back pressure. So we are calculating that as output. It depends on the result what we need. We have to choose the key results that we have to get out of this analysis. Now this pressure drop has been set as an output parameter. Now we can simply close all these things. Now go back to the mesh and define this element size as an input parameter. And we can now close this too. Now we can see in the workbench window there is an input parameter as well as an output parameter. Now double click the parameter set. You can see the input parameter and the output parameter that we have defined. Already we got the result for 20 millimeters. Now we need the results for 10 millimeters, 5 millimeters, 2 millimeters and 1 millimeters and how the results changing is our observation. So let me add some point here that is 10 millimeter. 5 millimeters, 2 millimeters and 1 millimeters that is at the least. Now let me update all design points. Now the solution will run in the background. The mesh will be updated in the background and uh, the setup will be updated in the background and also the solution will run in the background and it will report the pressure drop result here. So we can directly get the results without doing all laborious things. And let us also try for a size of 0 0.5 millimeter mesh size. And now we have to make a plot out of these values. Now we can see in the x axis we can see the mesh size that is in millimeters, 40 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 10 millimeters and 5 and all. And in the y axis we are seeing the pressure drop results and uh, we can observe that um, at 40 millimeters we got result that is around 0 0.05 and uh, when we reduce the mesh size uh, the result is getting below 0 0.04 and after it uh, takes a high uh, but the thing that we have to observe is from 40 to 20 uh, the variation is very much. After that the variation is uh, less. But however it again takes a hike. But anyway we cannot go beyond this uh, 0.5 millimeters and uh, 0.25 millimeters. That is too go fine for us and the computational cost will be very high. We can conclude that if the result, if the mesh size is below 20 millimeters, the change is not uh, evident. Uh, whereas we, if it is above 20 millimeters, the change is really high. And if you see deeper into that, we can also have a, a hype again here. So if you want to have more precise results, your mesh size should be at least 2 millimeters because the change between 2 millimeters, 1 millimeter and 0.5 millimeter is very less. Whereas after going to the 5 millimeters, the result is getting reduced. So it depends on our expectation. If, and if you want more precise result, we have to move on to uh, 2 millimeters. You see, uh, again, that is the next point that we can choose. And the ultimate thing is the result should not be dependent on the mesh size. That should be a constant when the mesh size is changing. That's why we, are, we have to choose an optimum mesh size. 
that don't have much result variation and also that don't consume more computational cost thank you for watching